Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Revelations Seminar. I am Arthur Middenhall, the, the host, and my co-hosts are Cherie McGee. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Keith Campbell. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we hope today's topic of conversation will stimulate your mind, not only stimulate your mind, but give you a different perspective on today's topic of discussion. Um, today's, like I said, today's topic, topic of conversation will be love or pretense. Now, before we delve into it, we're sort of going to ask Cherie to sort of give uh, her perspective on this love of pretense or sort of explain really what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be dealing with the relationship between parent and child and what happens if the um, parent doesn't love the child right? Uh, and how that affects the child. And um, let's go ahead and go to our definition. Uh, so Keith, did you sort of want to elaborate on it? Uh, no, I'm cool. No? Okay. All right, we're going to what our definition? Love, a deep feeling of affection for or attachment or devotion to a person or persons. Pretense, a false show of something or to pretend. And then again, we're talking about love as it relates to parent-child relationship, right? right. Okay. So uh, now we have what, an African proverb? Love is like a seed. It does not choose the ground on which it falls. And that's from the Zulu. So do you think perhaps a child, do you think children, when they are born, do you think they choose their parents? Um, uh, that's some heavenly uh, <laughs> <laughs> spiritual question. Uh, whether, like we sit around in heaven saying, okay, I want. So I would think from what I do know, no, I don't think we choose our parents. So you just think you... you Copulate. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you then get what you get. You get what you get. Unless you look at it, uh, unless you look at it this way, that parents can choose their children, and you can choose what to teach them and how to mold them. Well, I, think, I think it's deeper than that. I really do believe that people have the ability to uh, decide on what kind of children they will have. Mm -hmm. If you want an artistic child and you're artistic, then you should marry someone who's what? Artistic. Uh -huh. If you are a singer and you love music, you really may want to choose someone who has the same or like interest uh, in singing. So do you think those kind of abilities are genetic? Yeah, all of those are genetic. In my opinion, they're genetic. Uh, you know, and the thing is, I think with people is that, and I'm back to that same question. We talked about what love was, mm -hmm. but that's not exactly what love is. I think all of us have a choice in who we love. Uh, we have a choice on considering how we fell in love or where you get your definition of love from. If you got it from the television, then, of course, you're going to do the Hollywood Cinderella thing. Well, so, even, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go on. Even with children, parents have a choice on... You, well, basically, I think, uh, well, you know, I was uh, just talking about, first of all, the mixture. Uh -huh. What kind of child are you going to produce? If you know your person have issue with children with buck teeth... <laughs> Then you don't need to marry someone <laughs> who has in their family buck teeth or, but, big, but, or big ears. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that I mean, you know, my opinion is about this love thing is that the lust falls off after a while, mm -hmm. and then that's when we try to supplant what we call love. But the thing is, I think when it comes to our children, yeah, I think we have more say than we really think we do when it comes down to. Uh, the way our children look, the way that they turn out, the gifts they possess. But I'm sort of talking about, you know, before the child is conceived, do you really think somewhere out there in the divine spirit world, you, or we, we decided decide who, parents who parents are, are going to be? Well, yes. I, don't, I don't know. About, well, I can give you, you know, all the philosophical thing, but, you know, no. uh, at this point, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, that's what well, I'm... Can we okay. go back to the definition of love? Yeah, and love. Can, Love yeah, as a feeling. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. I would... There we go. Love as a feeling. I know, especially in my generation, uh, we try to define love as more than just a feeling. Mm -hmm. That it's um, an action word. It's a verb that you demonstrate love. And it's more um, something that you do outwardly than something you feel internally. And I was just wondering your uh, thoughts on that. Love, huh? That's a pretty broad 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 issue of subject uh, because you have a variety of loves according to the Greek definition they had four different types of love you know uh, I guess love is love but I guess it all depends on how far you will want to explore that love 
it's got start, as we always say, in, as I always say in the show, you got to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. If you love yourself and you're clear, and I'm not talking about loving a fake self, you know, if you know you don't have an inch of hair and you go get some weed put in and you fall in love with that image, mm -hmm. then something's wrong with you because, you know, it, it, it's not true. The thing is, is that I think with parents and with children, we don't give it a lot of thought. We just lay, we fall in love, fall in lust or whatever, lay down, have a child nine months later. Then all of a sudden, the child becomes the part of the house, and then you realize you don't love, then you divorce, then you got that issue. Mm -hmm. I think the thing with us as, as people or as humans, we really need to really take a subject that's a little more deeper than what it is and treat it that way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. so I mean, you know, that's sweet. I mean, to hear, you know, it's like a seed, but you got to decide on where you're going to plant your seed. Okay. That's true because, okay. well, go ahead. But my question was, is it more than just a feeling, this love? Thing? No, love is not a feeling. You don't think it's not Lust an emotion? Is a so love is not an emotion. No, love is not. Love is a living, sentient being. And and this emotional, yes, it's emotional if you're just a sex freak. Or if you're a booty freak and she got a big booty or he got a big penis. Yeah. It's it's and that's the reason it doesn't stay. Mm -hmm. So that's lust. Love. Lust is not I know, really no, love. I know we talk in church what it is. Mm -hmm. But basically to most people that's love. That's the reason they can divorce so easily. That's reason they can fall out of what they call love so the easily. Booty got a too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you got used to the booty. So, <laughs> so I mean, I mean, the thing is, is that it's like I said, we in America just do not desire to grow up and to realize when we when we're doing things, the consequences of it, but not what the consequences of you doing it wrong. The consequences of you about who you are. Now, if you know you don't love a person who snores, or you don't, you can't sleep with someone you don't wanna but some fall in love would, with somebody like that. Well, well, some people say, "Well, love can well, conquer all right, a then. person who and snores." And that's the reason we I have. You in spite of your and that's the reason we have a seventy-five percent marital divorce rate. Is that the seventy-five percent? That's pretty sure. high. I, I don't you know, know the per, I mean, the precise well, see, percentage. Fifty-fifty for those that are reported through the courthouse, but we're not talking about the shacking. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, the thing is, is that this is the reason why we have such uh, craziness and people are so deranged, you know, because basically we fall in love with an idea, but we never fall in love with ourselves okay. to say, this is what I want and this is what we're really Okay, but, but even if, okay, you're in, in saying that, mm -hmm. how at some point someone is going to have to learn what love is. It's going to right. be taught by somebody, it's going to either be taught by yourself about reading some book, about listening to some oh, some type of philosophy. Right. So you're going to be taught this love right. through some but method. But you have to want to be taught. Uh huh. See, the thing is, we don't want to be taught. We just want to look and observe at a 30-minute soap opera mm -hmm. and say, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So I want a man who got some money. I want da 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 But we never go to the right sources. <laughs> you know, or I want a woman, da 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 We never go to the right sources. Oh, yes, we choose what we learn from. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But the thing is, is that before the children get in the mix, you've got, I mean, I know we're about to talk about parents love. Right. But see, a lot of this is the most, this is the part that happens the most with it. So, like, yeah, going on to this, this, why do people have children? Sid, go to that screen. Go to the screen, would you please? Yeah. Uh, why do people? Reach your if you don't why, mind. No problem. Why do people have children? Unprotected sex. Unprotected sex. So. Mm -hmm. Pressure from family, religious reasons, and loneliness. So what's the number one, how you would think is what? Because of unprotected sex or just once you get with someone and you decide that you're in this mood where you just, you're, you're in this mood. Well, um, I, a lot of children are born to accidents. Sydney, you can come back to us. Accidents or mistakes. But I think it goes back to what you said about loving yourself. Because what, what you know about today's society and how dangerous it is to have unprotected self, uh, sex, right? Mm -hmm. you have to not love yourself to put yourself in that privilege. But I'm talk but I'm thinking more on the lines of if you're married. Oh, okay. You know, and, and you're married and maybe perhaps the, the husband doesn't want children or the wife. Well, I'm not gonna say the wife, but the husband really doesn't want kids and all of a sudden, you know, the the the, the couple is not taking preventive measures mm -hmm. to prevent. Well I think number one reason should call the ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> that should be number one. Because you're just ignorant. And what I mean by ignorant is that you don't have a clue to what you are, what monster you are inviting into your life. Mm -hmm. If children have not, if people who get married <clears throat> and they're having unprotected sex, then basically 
you're saying uh, that either you're undisciplined. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Either somebody does not want to take uh, the pill or they don't want to By deal with it. Yeah. Or, you know, it, it, you got two lazy people mm-hmm. and you got two ignorant, lazy people. And then when this thing happens, as oh. if they don't know where babies come from, yeah. then, you know, <laughs> they, they are surprised. Uh-huh. But the thing is, number one should be just plain ignorant. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, <laughs> okay, and the second yeah, reason. Ignorance has brought a lot of children. <laughs> it has. The world. It, it really, ignorance has messed up a lot of children. Ignorance, are, okay, if you want to say, use the word ignorance, I, but we're talking unprotected sex, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> ignorant sex. Yeah, that That's is. That's ignorant sex. You are ignoring the possibility that you're going to bring a baby into the world. You are ignoring the knowledge that if you have sex, sex without protection. Right. It's a 99% that you're going to bake a baby. Right. Because that's what sex is designed so for. So you have it. You have it. Well, what are the reasons? Sex. You have yes. an ignorant sex. And you're ignorant. Okay, okay, well, we can go on with that then. All right, then. And the second was what, Cherie? Pressure from family. Now, you oh, know, yes. Right. Now, each time I used to go home <laughs> to Alabama, <laughs> my grandparents, not my grandparents, but relatives and and friends, uh, older friends, you know, uh, of the family. Well, when are you getting married? <laughs> uh, when are you going to have some children? And number two should be weak. <laughs> <laughs> because definitely, because when people ask me that, I say, because I don't want one. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or I don't want to be married or mm-hmm. I'm not getting married until I got married. It's just when you tell people that, they leave you alone. But when you're kind of weak and you just kind of want to make up excuses, well, I'm mm-hmm. working on it, I'm working on it. Well, you're inviting them. To get into your business. If you say shut the double H E L L hockey stick up, then they will never ask you again. Why Number you, two, weakness. Why do you think why do you think family members pressure? Because they want you to be as miserable. As and, they and, that's, were. and a lot of times that's exactly what it is. Because it's hard work, so I hear, raising a kid. Well, yeah, it, well, is, it's it can be, it can like be demanding. With, right, it's just like with marriage. If you notice the people who actually most of the time are pressure you the most about marriage are people who, who are unhappily married. Mm-hmm. Most of the time it's those people who, because misery loves company. Not saying that marriage is miserable, right. but you always find out people who have a bunch of children and they are near the, the line of madness are the first <laughs> one. Like, when are you going to have your baby? You sense, and, and you don't, and sometimes we don't have enough sense. Well, baby, you had enough for all of us. And what I see you going through, no, I don't want any, not at this time. I don't so, think know. so. Okay, all right. Religious reasons, huh? Um, what do you mean? Now, are we are, are we still going to deal with pressure from family, or are we just moving no, on to religious the... reasons? What do you mean? Oh well, uh, there are people have uh, that conceive because they this is their religion. They believe that they should populate the earth. I know in Catholicism, for a long time, it was looked down upon to use contraceptives. Right. You and know? it still is, huh? Yeah, I think so. And that's very amazing. You have all these men who are not married. Hello. Telling you. That, have some babies. And they don't have any children. They don't have any wives. But yet they're going to tell you, like I said, the first one. <laughs> okay, let's go on. And I know I just offended half of New Orleans because, you know. But the thing is, is that you got to think for yourself. And... There are a lot of children who are brought into this world under that foolishness, and, and the parents don't want them. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and the reason we're discussing these reasons is because when, not saying, I, well, yeah, if you look at this and, and you really look at it honestly and say, okay, well, I'm having a child out of these re- for these reasons, then you really have to ask yourself, is it, is it really worth it? Am I really going to love my child? Uh, uh, am I going to pretend right. To love my child. No, I'm not just going to love it because it's here. Right. No one, I don't think anyone ever says, well, I'm going to pretend to love it. It's like a pimple. It's there. You got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And this is a pimple that lasts for most of your lifetime. Mm-hmm. I think the thing is with people, most of them never really <clears throat> think about children. Children are an afterthought after they find out they are pregnant. Mm-hmm. That's when children become a thought. But most of the time, I don't think most people uh, sit down and say, well, do I have the finance? Oh, do I right. have the room? Right. Do I have who's going to stop working right. to take care of this baby? Are we both going to work and let a stranger gonna, raise right. it? Which, which I think is, is an abuse. To allow a stranger to raise oh, your child goodness, yes. or that's to rear? Well, that's the most abusive relationship I think anyone. Well, when, you t- right. when you say, when you say, go ahead, Sheree. Well, 
some parents do that because they need two incomes then to survive. Then they should have had the child. Okay, point taken. All right then. <laughs> so, so you, oh, okay, so you sort of from the old school. If you if you have a child, then one of the parents should remain at no, home. I'm from the right school, <laughs> and what I mean by this is, when you get married, there has to be a nurturer and a provider. If you have two nurturers, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. If you have two providers, you're in trouble. You see what I'm saying? So the one person can't be two. No. Can't wear both hats. Well, you can if you want to, but you, you're going to look like silly. You only got one hand. <laughs> so, I mean, the thing is... Now you know what I mean. Well, well I know what you mean, and I know what the norm of the day has become. Well, what about... Um, okay, I have a child, but I still have a life, and I still have dreams, and no, I still baby, have goals. No, baby, you laid down with your ignorant self. <laughs> you should have took care of your life before you had that baby. You should have reached your goals before having that child. Because once you bring that child or those children into the world, then your priorities have to change. That's like saying, oh, give me a puppy. And then the puppy turns into a big 50-pound dog. Well, guess what? Your life has changed. So do you think that maybe perhaps, I mean, because I, mean, I, I know it exists, there, there has to be parents or uh, uh, people out there that have a child and it's just one person taking care of this child and, well, and they... Yeah, I understand what you're saying, mm-hmm. but there are always more than one person. Because there's a grandmama who taking okay. care of the baby when you at work. Mm-hmm. Or there's a daycare provider that's taking care of the baby. So someone is work. nurturing the child. Someone else someone. is nurturing. If you're not there, motherhood is a 24-hour job. Fatherhood is a 24-hour job. Mm-hmm. I'm not against the woman working and the man staying at home being the nurturer. Most of the time, men do raise children better. You see what I'm saying? I don't have nothing to say because I, I don't. Well, I can now look at the world today and who's been the one raising them. You see what I'm saying? Women. So well, anyway, good so well, you have to look at what's in front of us. So the thing that I'm saying is if you're having a baby, to do it what I consider right, someone has to say, I'm going to become the nurturer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the one in case the child falls out in school where I don't have to fight the boss <laughs> to go and get off mm-hmm. to go see about my child. I'm not going to put my child through the extra effort of get him up three hours earlier because I got to get him ready, me ready. You see what I'm saying? Right, yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, yes, you always have to have a nurturer just as you have a provider. Okay. What about this loneliness? Yeah, I was going to, yeah, loneliness. <laughs> I, I think because I have, I have, well, I've listened to radio mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and, and people have called in talking to the host of the show, explaining that, yes, there have been instances where they, they conceived a child because they were lonely and they w- thought this child was going to bring happiness in their life. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the talk shows on TV, I forget which one it was, quite a few years ago I was listening, I was watching it, and it was ex- they had this young teenage girl on there, and she was mm-hmm. explaining that the reason she had the child is because she was lonely and she wanted a child, to have someone there, to have this person with her. To t- and it did it work? No, because it added more responsibilities. Uh-huh. And she was not prepared for it because she was still a child. Yes, yeah, she was still a child. Well, well, what about adults who do the same thing? Yes. Yeah, I, I think there. I, well, I haven't met an adult who actually confessed <laughs> that they actually had the child out of loneliness. Out of loneliness. Yeah, well, I don't know any. I never had, heard anybody say, well, I was lonely, I just had a child. I did. I watched tele- It was know. a talk show, and I well, forget I, which talk show yeah, it was. Well, I figure with them, you always have those who are... Uh, a little unbalanced. But don't you think perhaps if you were single and you wanted a child, you know, that maybe perhaps by having the child, it would bring, it would resolve that loneliness, well, that state I don't of know loneliness? About loneliness. I know from, from my decision, if I am unmarried by a certain age, I have decided to adopt a child or whatever. Right. And um, the reason why is because. Um, I do want to teach someone. I want to teach someone what I know, mm-hmm. and I want to, you know, raise a child. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's out of loneliness. Mm-hmm. I just want to share a part of my life. I think we should change that loneliness to selfishness, and that's the worst reason in the world. You having a child because of you because a dog, a cat, a and lover. how would you define that selfishness? Selfishness, me, 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 me. But ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, even if you have two parents who want a child, is, isn't it they want to get, they, they're conceiving this child because they want it? It's not, they. Yeah, they. Right. They, not me. They. Selfish in itself. Well, okay. The, what's the difference? The two, two shall people can't become be one. Uh, yeah, but two That's what the Bible says. <laughs> they can say all they want to say. <laughs> two is better than one. 
And the thing that I'm saying is, is that people who get on these kicks, they want to put a <clears throat> put through a test tube, and they don't want to be bothered with the man. Right. They just want to have a child, and they want to turn their loneliness to busyness. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I guess, okay, so you're saying the bottom line is out of loneliness is just not a good reason. Oh, no. You, basically, if you love yourself, you're not going to be lonely. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps, okay, in loving yourself, then perhaps you would take the initiative to go out and develop a loving relationship with someone mm -hmm. that you or, choose. Or, or even, and I'm not even suggesting that, I'm right. saying that if a person decides that they want to raise a village or to raise a child mm -hmm. in this world of the village, that's cool. But realize you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You need a support mm -hmm. network. And the support work network is not your mama. Because you figure she ain't got nothing to do. Right. You don't know my mama. When mama becomes, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have the money mm -hmm. and you know a network where you can bring a child into the world and you realize, okay, there are five more like me and this is what we do, da 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 da. Well, that, that's, that's structured. Mm -hmm. That's not doing it out of ignorance. You see what I'm saying? Right. And it's doing it for not a reason. I'm lonely. I'm doing it because I decide I'm going to be a humanitarian and I'm going to take a child that's not wanted and I'm going to... You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So another reason we have is what, Cherie? Let's go to that screen, Sydney. Yeah. Jones syndrome. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. What, what they mean? What does that mean? Jones. Did you know about that, that Jones syndrome? Okay. Uh, my friend down the street, she has gotten a new car. Uh, my friend over and out in the east has gotten a new home. And so, home. because somebody have a baby, you gonna have a baby. Well, yeah. apparently, especially in, in suburbs, according to twenty twenty, anyway, that's the trend <clears throat> nowadays for um, uh, a wealthier, a well-to-do people Sydney, to, us, please. to have more children because mm -hmm. they can afford more children. And the more children they have, the more status they have. Mm -hmm. Because they can afford these. Children. And to and to pick it back on what you're saying, this issue about these celebrities. Now, mm -hmm. well, and we know who we're talking about, right. Miss Madonna uh -huh. and whoever that Angelina. other woman is. Yes. Sydney, to us, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're having a little technical problems here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, we're back. We're back in focus. But anyway, we were saying about, uh, we were talking about the celebrities uh, where they are now going overseas uh, adopting mm -hmm. International children. <laughs> That's so sweet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a sweet thing, but I'm hoping they're doing it for the right reason and not for. Well, Angelina says she loves them babies. Uh, As a matter does. of fact, she says she, she she's finding it. I don't know if that's true, so I don't say well, it. Well, my thing, my thing is, is that if you are a monkey see, monkey do, shame on you. I'm, I, shame I find it very you. hard to believe that. A baby can be a trend. Well, I mean, if, if you have enough money, it's you, just like buying a pair of shoes. You're not taking care of it.